about you know how busy the holidays are and Christmas and New Year's and for me a, a guy that likes routine um, to have Christmas in the middle of the week and then New Year's and then you know with the businesses that I'm blessed to be a part of it kind of puts a little wrinkle in your flow and, and you know as New Year's comes to an end and we're in 2015 as as this past I think two days ago we took our tree down and began to put the house back together. A lot of us look for that kind of sigh of relief that you know now we can get back to our routines. And it was important, as I alluded to earlier, that you guys see that we're not going to sit back. We're not going to get complacent. We're not going to become stagnant. The opportunities that are laid upon us in this this year that we're now in, we're not no longer talking about the new year or doing new things. We're right in the middle of it. I don't have time and we don't have time to sit back and think about it. We talked about that a little bit last week. I mean, ideas are great, but I'm interested in action. I really at times get a little flustered when people ask me to sit on boards, and they do often. And we sit back, and, and granted, before an action, it has to be an idea. Before uh, uh, an action, there has to be a thought. But I don't want to be, or do I want us to be, one of those churches that just has a lot of great ideas. See, God has handpicked you. The Bible says that the gifts which are instilled upon you, they're just not on Pastor Jeff, they're just not on Tyler and Jason or Mike or whoever's sitting next to you in the pews. The gifts are instilled in you. Talked about it, I had the opportunity to preach at a, my bishop's church this morning. It's been a very, very busy day. And I talked about different gifts that we have. A lot of people manipulate. Well, that's just a gift that God has given you of creativity. A lot of people have anger issues. Well, that's just the gift of passion that God has given you that's been mischanneled. See, God says in His Word that His gifts and His call is irrevocable. And as I thought about, you know, this particular message for this particular time, going into a new year, a year of opportunity, last year at this time I, I preached a message on a lot of us give New Year's resolutions. You don't have to give a resolution on something that's already resolved. See, a lot of us are making resolutions with Christ, what's already been resolved. A lot of us are living underneath our privileges when we fail to recognize that we have freedom because who the sun sets free is free indeed. I am not going into one more minute of my life being a victim of my circumstances. I'm not going to speak about my circumstances. I'm going to speak to my circumstances. And the Bible says in Mark 11 that if you speak to that mountain, it has to move in Jesus' name. See, I no longer want to be a murderer and a complainer, you know, complaining about the state of the union, the state of our country, the state of our schools. I want to be right in the middle. In fact, I don't want to just be part of the change. I want to be the change. Yeah. Don't just talk about change. Be the change. Be the transformation. See, some of us know what it's like to be down and out and now be one of the few selected to be the up-and-comers. You don't have to have drastic testimony. We've all been there and done that. But I'm here to tell you, church, this is the year to get engaged. This is the year to lock it in. This is the year to secure your future. This is the year that your past can be forgiven, your present can have meaning, and your future can be secure. Because when you live by those principles, and those principles alone, through the power of God, you are locked in, you are engaged. Yes. See, I'm not going to just talk about what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it and then talk about it. Yes. See, I love what Candy gave me that t-shirt this year. She said, just did it. I used to live my life with that Nike slogan, just do it. Well, I never did anything. I talked about a lot of things. <laughs> but we need to be a church that says, just did it. 2014, we just did it through the power of God. Right. We ain't sitting back on our Lord. We got big plans for 2015. I'm here to tell you your dreams will be fulfilled in 2015. Oh, yeah. The seeds will come to harvest in 2015. And as I began to meditate, what does it mean to get engaged? 
In 2 Corinthians 4, 1-6, 2015 is the year to get engaged for the sake of time. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to go through it. God has given us this ministry of SBCC. 2 Corinthians 4, 1, in 2015 will be stronger than ever. It says, therefore, through God's mercy. How much mercy has been on your life? See, if you've experienced extreme mercy like I have, extreme mercy, God wants to use you extremely. Amen. See, through God's mercy, we have this ministry. And it says, so we do not lose heart. The Bible also says, though outwardly we may be with, but inwardly we're being renewed day by day. For these light and momentary troubles are achieving. Have you ever looked at your troubles in a way that they're sent and meant to achieve something in your life? Instead of running from them, run to them and through them. Don't speak about them, speak to them. The troubles in life are designed to build endurance because if God can trust you at this level, church, I'm telling you the, 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 the attacks are going to be higher at that level, but it ain't you fighting it because the victory is already yours. Yes, the only power the devil has is the power that you give him. You have to agree with him to have power. And that's what it's saying now in 1 Corinthians 1, 26. God's mercy loved you through your foolishness. How many people participated in foolishness? <laughs> Check out what the Bible says. It says, brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. What I was was nothing nice. But I can't be who I was and who I'm supposed to be at the same time. I can't be pitiful and powerful. We gotta understand that you know, I, you know, I might have did it, but I'm not it. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many of noble birth. Some of us didn't grow up the right way. Some of us didn't have the privileges that other children had. But it says not many of you were wise and, and were noble birth. It says, but God chose. You gotta understand how God works. God chose the foolish things. God used the fool. In fact, he chose the foolishness. Allowed the foolishness to shame the wise. He says, God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. See, what the devil used to demote you, God will use to promote you. That foolishness is sent to promote you. Quit, quit living with regrets. Quit, quit living. All those things, your greatest pain will be your greatest ministry. Your greatest problem will be your greatest ministry. See, it's so important to know that God chose. Now, that's what that Alpha Course video says. Well, why would God choose that? Why would he allow that? I'm grateful for my addiction. There would be no church if that hadn't taken place. See, I'm grateful for the trials in life of having been separation from my family and broken relationships. And things not working out as planned. If they would have worked out as I planned them, we wouldn't have this church. Amen. God's plan is always greater than our plan. Amen. And do we participate? And it says now in John 15, 16, God chose to propose to you. Now when we look at an engagement, as I began to study with this word, I want to look at it a couple different ways. I want to look at it as how Jesus looks at you. If you're actually going through a relational engagement, what that feels like as a person. How many of you have been part of broken relationships? See, my relationships were screwed up because I was in them. <laughs> but I blame the other person all day, every day. But God wants to propose you to propose. So you did not choose me, but I chose you. Sometimes when people show interest in us, if God shows interest in us, if God saves us, if God picks us up and turns us around and places our feet on solid ground, we ask ourselves, and the devil chimes in, well, why me? Why did you choose me? I'm a failure. I don't have any. All these reasons, once you know that God is tugging on your heart, you're going to talk yourself out of it. You fail before you even get started. See, when I met my wife, she didn't understand because of her own issues that she had. And I know some of you can relate to this. She didn't understand 
why I would choose her. Why would you choose me? I'm a single mom. Why would you choose me? I'm, I'm, I'm scratching just to make it by. Why would you choose me? I ain't got nothing. See, some of you will settle for less than you should because you don't think you have any worth. And you're dating a third stringer when your king is sitting right in front of you. See, I mean, how many people with God, with your human relationships, with your professions, as you get promoted, what do you see in me that I don't see in myself? See, the Bible says that I chose you. You didn't choose me. But some of us are unfamiliar when we get chosen. How to act. We don't think it is that we can do that. It says, and, and I gave you this work, it says, to go and produce fruit that will not last. So as I talk about being engaged, some of you might have had relationships that are broken, that have failed, but they weren't meant to last. This isn't a sermon of being depressed, or I would have, I should have, or I could have, I'll be happy when, or if. No, be happy now. Amen. You have never been in a place that you are now to receive the, the calling that God has in your life. Everything that happened had to happen for you to receive what he has for you in 2015. Amen. The more you try to figure it out and lean on your own understanding, the more crooked your path will be. Getting into analysis paralysis. <laughs> Wondering why. Wondering why this had to happen and how that could have happened. And, and it says that I gave you this work to produce fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you anything you ask for in my name. Isn't it something when you get into relationships, you'll do anything for that person? Yeah, yeah. Amen. In fact, you don't even know what it is they're asking for. So we begin, and, 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 and what God is saying to us is He wants to propose to us. So He says, if you, if you do the work that I called you to do, I will give you anything you ask in my name. See, I used to ask for new cars. <laughs> new girlfriend. But God is saying, no, if you ask for anything in my name, if you seek first the kingdom, I will add all these things to you. Church, what are you asking for? What it is, what it is, and it says now in Romans 11, 29, God isn't going to change his mind about you. See, a lot of times in human relationships, we, we wait for the other shoe to drop, and we don't live out the way God wants us to live. I'm here to tell you, we live, because if you are wondering why a human being chose you, or why God chose you, you're going to wonder, too, when is it going to happen that he's going to change his mind? A lot of you have been in relationships where you, you continued to... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. I think a lot of you... That's like an act of security. <laughs> Let's give Mike a hand. But I think a lot of us in life and our relationships have asked, what do you see in me? Secondly, we, we live the life of low self-worth, waiting for the other person to change their mind about us. And a lot of us have lived a life not waiting for the other shoe to drop. We force it down. Amen. And I'm here to tell you that God is a man of his word. When he says in Romans 11, 29, that his call on you is irrevocable, he isn't going to change his mind about you. When he says that he wants you to engage in him, in 1 Corinthians 9, 17, God trusted you to engage in. If you're doing this with your own initiative, I would deserve it. See, I mean, I remember pursuing girls and, and having, the, you know, it says that I have given you this sacred trust. So when Jesus calls you, when he says, I chose you, and I have work for you to do, Work that's just going to produce amazing fruit. Not fruit that's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. Fruit that will last. And you can ask anything from me if you do these things and I will give them in my name. And then he says that I'm not going to change my mind about you. Like human beings 
things have done to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with you. I'm going to be there for you. But now what the Bible says, yeah, I'm not doing this on my own initiative. Otherwise, I would deserve payment. See, when you really recognize, and this is what I pray for you in January of this year, that God will touch you and you will engage in life with Him, that he, you won't deserve payment because you'll get everything you ever need. But I remember as a young boy in, in high school and, and, and having fathers, or even in my 20s, 20s and say, I, I, I trust you with my daughter, and they shouldn't have trusted me. Sometimes when you're given trust, I talked about that last week, you know, with the different things, and, 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 and we turn not to for God has given me a sacred trust. What is the sacred trust that He gave me? What is the sacred trust that He gave you? That He called you. That He chose you. That He will equip you. And He won't change His mind about you. What about a trust in that? Let me tell you something. I, I, if, I, if I learned, see, I didn't trust myself. I couldn't trust people, and I certainly didn't trust God. Because I thought He changed His mind about me because of my behaviors. Because the Bible says there's no height nor depth, no nothing on this planet that can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. I worked hard to separate myself from God. I worked hard to separate myself from people that love me because I didn't know what love was. And it goes on to say, God wants to be, get to know you more intimately this year. 2 Corinthians 4.2. It says, in order to get engaged, we can't hide anything. Rather, we have renounced secret and shame. How many of you have dated somebody that you knew they were hiding something? <laughs> be honest. See, with God, you, you don't have to hide anything. I mean, if you truly, you know, meet your, your mate, you shouldn't have to hide anything from them. See, in 2015, we need to renounce secret and shame away. We do not use deception. See, I don't want to live a life that I hope that you never find this out about me. And then we hide from God. It's like He doesn't know anyone. <laughs> How many of you have been in relationships wondering every night if that person found out who you really were, what you really did, how many kids you really had. Nipping on your heels, hitting on you. Get used to it. 
real proud of yourself walking in with your new mate. <laughs> Tonight I'm going to ask you if there's anyone that this 
not accepted him into your heart, I'm going to ask you. That's you with your heart calling. <coughs> Tonight is the night that you answer the call. Tonight is the night that you don't slither down in the pew. You stand straight up and walk up. 2015 is too precious to live underneath your privilege. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice that has looked for people to save them and they missed what the Savior was trying to do? Is there anyone that would like to accept Jesus Christ to start the year, which is the guarantee of the rest of your life? Is there anybody under the sound of my voice? I'm going to tell you, I know there's two to three of you, and you know who you are. And if one of you gets up, the other two will come. Who is that person? Come on.
church, if you guys would please grab the plates. I'm asking you, and we'll start with these queens. It's time for you to get engaged. It's time for you to publicly declare that I'm locked and loaded, and I'm going to come up and I'm going to pick up this ring. I'm going to make a promise to God and to myself that He is my first love. It doesn't matter if you're married. Maybe this is what's needed to get your marriage back off the ground. Maybe you just went through a divorce. Maybe this is a time to know that there's somebody better out there for you. Maybe your life is dry and you're, you're so busy settling for third stringers, you're going to commit to, to the Lord tonight that I'm going to wait for the first stringer. I'm going to wait for my king or queen. I'm no longer going to settle for second best. I'm not eating leftovers anymore. And I want you, as you give this, I want you to put the ring on your finger because you're getting engaged to Jesus tonight. And I want you, please, to grab your ring first. Grab one of these rings. And after, after the service, I'm asking you to come back up and receive prayer from our prayer team. This is your engagement. Now, church, I'm asking you to publicly declare tonight and get up out of your pews and come and get one of these rings to signify that Jesus is your first love. Please no talking. You have been engaged to the wrong person. Even if you're married or engaged or whatever it is that Jesus wants to be your first love and he ain't going to change his mind about you.
putting this service on today it meant a lot to me. I would like to ask Megan, will the drinking please come up front?
ladies that received Jesus into their heart tonight to please step downstairs. We want to connect with you and continue to support you. We also want to remind everybody that there are going to be the prayer teams available for you up at the altar if you would like to receive prayer after today's service. Father God, we just thank you so much for this glorious day. We thank you for your never-ending love. We thank you for choosing us, Father God, in spite of us, Lord. We thank you for overlooking all of our faults, look, looking past our brokenness, Father God, for just opening your arms wide and receiving us just as we are. Father God, we thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your promises, Lord. We thank you for in your word where you tell us that we are more than conquerors, Lord, that the past has gone, the old is gone, and the new has come, Father God, that we don't need to live in the past, that anything that we have done, said, hurt people, Father God, all those things are washed away by you, that you have tossed all of our sins into the sea of forgetfulness, and that you love us despite anything that we may have done, acted upon or said that has not been pleasing to you, Father God, and we love you unconditionally for that love that you have for us, Father God. I pray that each and every person under the sound of my voice, Lord, is able to receive that love, Father God, from you. Because you tell us that you give it to us with no strings attached. Lord, my prayer is that each and every person represented here today will make you their first love, Father God. That they will remember, remember that with you being their one and only, that you will fall, make everything else fall into place, Father God, in our lives. That when we seek you first, we seek the kingdom first. Everything else falls into place, always, Father God. That we remember that maybe some of the things that we have been through that have been painful, that may not look so good, Father God, that you work everything together for the good because we love you and we have been called according to your purpose, Father God. We're here today. And because we're here today, we know that you chose us by name, that you have already determined the purpose and the plan that you have for each and every one of us. Father God, we thank you so much for Mark and Megan. We ask that you bless their marriage, Father God. We know that you'll always be the center of it, Father, and we just thank you so much for that beautiful union and the godly manner that it was executed, Father God. We thank you so much for each and every soul represented here today and for those that are yet to come, Lord. We just pray a special blessing upon each and every person that we start our week with a sweet sleep as our heads hit the pillow tonight, Father God. Bless each and every person from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Father God. We just ask that you encamp your angels around each and every one of us, and that you be with us until we can meet again. In your precious name we pray. Amen.